Okay, so in this short video, I'm just going to be showing you how to use Google Keyword Planner. Now, you do have to have a running AdWords campaign. Basically, you can do one cent, and that's what I do just to keep a campaign running. Um, I don't have any really active um, goals or anything like that that I'm trying to do with AdWords, but they only allow you to use the keyword planner if you have an AdWords campaign that is active. So that's how I get around that. Just um, start a small campaign for something on your site and you know just make it the lowest amount if you don't actually have any intent into using AdWords. So just make it like the lowest amount that you can set it at just to be able to use the Google Keyword Planner tool. So here you are inside the tool and this actually used to it they they've improved it in some ways and in some ways it's gotten a little bit worse the ways that it's gotten a little bit worse is that they don't give you exact search numbers anymore they used to give you like you know let's say it was like 550 and uh, 553 search results every month right now they would give you something like, oh, you're getting 100 to 1,000 search results every month. So it's not giving you as exact of data. However, it does give you still an idea of a term that's worth going after or a term that's not worth going after. So, and because it is straight from Google, I like to use the Google Keyword Planner over other tools like SEMrush or Ahrefs because those two tools are known for giving different types of data. Although for me, I'm like, if you know, Google's the main search engine that I'm concerned with, I want to just get my search data from Google directly. So that's how I feel about it. Now, the way that that Google Keyword Planner has actually gotten better is they have made these two buttons um, better in their results. So if you don't know, if you're looking for more keyword ideas and you want to add that to your list, I would use this button right here. If you already have a list of terms that you want to get the search volume for, I would use this button right here, the second button. So since we, we have a, a, a slight list of terms here, let's get more let's let's act as if we want to get more keyword ideas so let's type those in uh, just copy and paste those in right there you can also add a landing page to your website if you already have some content up that's going or you can put in a competitor here too so that you can uh, get some ideas of what their keywords would be I'm going to skip that for now so let's just type in uh, our ideas get ideas now Google Keyword Planner can be a little finicky sometimes. You'll see things like this uh, quite often. What I do is I'll just go up here and I'll refresh it again. If I still get it, I'll just kind of play back and forth between these two buttons until it works. I know that sounds really weird, but it does seem to work that way. Um, I really don't know why it does that. Maybe it's a cache thing. In either way, um, in either case, just play back and forth between these two buttons and um, getting ideas. So between these three, just play with it and it'll work eventually. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, here we can add more keyword ideas to our list. So let's go ahead and I like to just add these by groups. For some reason, this isn't adding things here, but let's just keep adding more. Sometimes like I said, sometimes it's a little finicky and now you guys see that, you know, the email list group did not add. So we may have to go back and do another search for that to add it later. E learning so anything that is related that is closely related to the topic that we're going to be touching on that's what we want to save
And if you wanted to, if you wanted to save all this time and you wanted to just make it really quick, you could add all. But again, it's just going to make more work for you when you're sorting later on. So just something to keep in mind. So once you've added all the things that look relevant to you, you can go ahead and you can either search over here in the keyword ideas, which is going to give you like individual keyword ideas, or you can go ahead and modify your search, putting in some new terms, uh, maybe things like make money online or earn money online, earn money from home. We'll refresh, and again, it wants to play shy, <laughs> so we will keep going at it. See, I don't know why it does that. Now, instead of me adding all these individual keywords over here, which you could do, you could go through it, I just prefer to add the ad groups. Also, another good reason you I like to use these ad groups is because when we export this info, all of these ad groups will be able to sort based on them, which takes out a lot of the um, sorting that you'll have to do. So that helps quite a bit. Making money online, money from home, work from home earn money, online courses, home earn. So again, you know, just whatever is most relevant to you. Now let's say that we're done here. We're done with our, our keyword ideas and Let's say that I just wanted to find out what these terms, what the search volume was for these terms, right? So I would go here, I go modify search. I'm going to cancel that. Click down here. And you can enter it like that or you can um, choose to upload it via a text file or a CSV. Again, it wants to play dumb for some reason, and the button is not even there this time. <laughs> So there we go. I don't know why it's so weird like that. But anyways, here you go. And we can add all these terms, add all 29. And now you wanna click on this, once you're all done, once you have, uh, you're satisfied with your keyword list and you have all the terms that you wanna add, come down here this little down arrow and you're gonna download the plan and then click Excel CSV. And then save file and it'll save to your computer. And that's it. And that's how you use Google Keyword Planner. Very easy, very simple. The only thing that I want to reiterate right here is the targeting. So you can change your country here the language and the search engine is is always either going to be Google or Google and search partners but I always just use Google and um, you know for the United States if you wanted to narrow down your searches a little bit more you could just go ahead and type in English that way you're not getting any other uh, suggestions that are not English and you could even sort by um, a specific city or state if you wanted to. But unless you are a local business, I don't recommend doing that. If you are a local business, then I would recommend 
searching by your state or by your city. So that way you are knowing exactly how many people are searching for you within your local area. And that's going to give you a much better idea than to target it nationally. So I hope these tips have been helpful for you and you can join me in the next video as we go over Longtail Pro 